Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Remember when we were young? <laughs> I know it seems like forever ago. Wow. And no. it was like 1974 or 5. Yes. And we had just gotten our licenses yes. and our first cars. And we used to go to the drive-in movies. Ooh, I love the drive-ins. Well, you know what? In Switzerland, they do drive-ins a little bit different. Ooh, I can't wait to hear about it. We'll tell you that next. So yeah, Ronnie, drive-in movies may be a thing of the past. There aren't many around. We've seen, mm. what was that one? Southgate um, um, drive-in? Do you remember that one? Nah. Over by Del Paso Boulevard in Sacramento? Oh. Uh, was that Southgate? 49er, wasn't 49er, it? 49er, that's 49er what it is. 49er drive-in. Yeah, we used to go there. Uh, there's a drive-in in Rancho Cordova, California. Where it's still there, in fact. This might be before your time, but there was the Starlight Drive-In. Oh, I do remember that. By Arden and I-80. There used to be one that showed X-rated movies in Davis. Oh, dang. And I'll tell you a quick story. One night, after a very, very late softball game, uh -huh. a group of about seven of us grabbed a whole bunch of beer and went to the drive-in movie, the X-rated drive-in movie in Davis. <laughs> yeah. The most uncomfortable, awkward drive-in movie I have ever been to. Damn. There's like six guys in the van. Sausage party. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, drive-in movies are alive and well in Switzerland. Of course, instead of seeing a movie, <laughs> patrons in Switzerland, where prostitution has been legal since the 1940s, wow. can receive the services of, shall we say, sex workers. Well, yes, we well, shall. Well, well. Let's say it. Well. Uh, in 2012, 52% of Zurich citizens voted in support of the government to set aside $2 million uh, to build drive-in structures, which are referred to as sex boxes. Give me a box. <laughs> in a discreet area. To operate the facilities each year, 800000 is set aside for security and on-site social services. Previously, sex workers were uh, mostly located at the city's riverfront area, but residents complained about the noise, the traffic jams, you know, the moaning and all that stuff. <laughs> I would know. <laughs> uh, five years after these sex boxes were opened, city officials have deemed the project a wild success. You told me this was your idea. Emphasis on wild. <laughs> <laughs> these government-sanctioned areas are effective in preventing violence against sex workers and human trafficking. Mm -hmm. uh, with the government's involvement in the industry, I, I can't see how that could possibly work here, but <laughs> sex workers are more protected and healthier overall. Prostitutes who must register with public health authorities and submit to regular health checks, pay taxes on their work and contribute to social security. Who knew they had social security in wow. Switzerland? I wonder if they're accepting uh, my application for residency there. I think I'm going to have to get mm. my um, visa renewed. Yes. Yeah. Although, uh, I don't know what I would do with it. <laughs> I have a MasterCard. I don't use Visa. Oh. Yeah. A MasterCard. Huh? Yes. So, you like to use it yourself? <laughs> yes. Uh, since offic officially opening in 2013, the sex boxes have seen improvements as well. In 2014, other structures were added that featured... Plank beds. Oh, that sounds comfortable. Uh, as some cu customers did not want to host in their cars. Well, you could knock your drink over. Ooh, yeah. Or worse. Uh, motorbikes and bicycles are also allowed to meet the needs of the population, according to authorities. Well, they say sex is like riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Without a seat. Uh <laughs> Walk-ins are en are encouraged to go to another city-sanctioned prostitution area, so they do discourage walk-ins. Do they have? So this is all right. Walk-in versus drive-through. That's right. the decision you have to make. Whichever right. is more convenient for you. Well, Taco Bell also doesn't allow walk-ins. If you so drive through, do you get a speaker? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> or <laughs> I'd like to listen to that booth over there. <laughs> <laughs> Just speak into the clown's mouth. <laughs> The windows are all fogged up. That looks like a good one. The women working set the price with their customers. So it's barter. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix your fence for you. <laughs> and once there is an agreement, they drive to one of the free boxes. Okay. I have a favorite box, number seven. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seven's great, isn't it? 
Seven is. I used to go to five. Uh-huh. Box five is just so yesterday. The view. It, it's yucky. Yeah. It's you know, nothing. you can't even see Swiss Miss from there. <laughs> <laughs> there oh. are no security cameras inside. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So they say. But there is an alarm button. What the hell is that for? Uh. Help! I've fallen. Okay, and yes. She can't I can't get it up? <laughs> <laughs> Which will alert security if they are in need of help. But so far, there have been no serious incidents. You know, I can't. You know what, Ronnie? I can't even believe that this is in place. But the more I think about it, the more I think it's a terrific idea. I'm looking for a downside. I mean, there's women are making money. Mm-hmm. Uh, They're being taken care of financially. And yep. also medically. And I can tell you that here in the United States, and especially in California, we have a tremendous uh, sex trafficking problem. I don't think we realize just how much of a problem we have. It's a, it's a big problem. They have a whole task force set up to try to work on it, but it's huge. Um, and so here they have a safe place to go. Uh, I'm sure they must check your trunk as you leave. Make sure you're not <laughs> taking any of the merchandise with you. <laughs> yeah. Let me out! <laughs> or or uh, what would you do on a bike? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So I I get it, and they're also these the women are paying into the Social Security, so it's got like a own retirement system in place. Yeah. Um, I would it work here in America? I don't see why not. I mean, honestly. Well, what if it has to be run by the government, Ron? And then I see a problem. Well, see, and there... so does Buster. Yes. (laughs) Buster says no. Um, See, that's where all the problems come in 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 America is when it's turned over to a government agency. Yeah. Uh, Right now, with our our marijuana sales and stuff, uh, so many hoops that people are having to jump through to get legal marijuana to sell and... um, it's it's not it's not as lucrative as Colorado's program. Which I remember is making millions of dollars. I did a radio show. I can't remember when. as a couple of months back, and they had right before it went legal in California. Marijuana went legal, and they had a guy on while I was in the studio who was being called Sacramento's drug czar. Okay. And he went on to say, and I'll spare you everything, but he went on to say that they were in no way, shape or form, ready for this right. to roll out. Right. It was a disaster from day one. It still is. It's like um it's like driving a car without knowing how to pull put gas in it. Yeah. You're gonna get so far and then it's gonna have to stop. Well, and it's still, so it was widely unregulated at first because there were no government agencies set up to oversee it. Mm-hmm. And so they threw some people, they pulled people out of DMV or I don't know, but uh, people with, you know, no experience in setting up that type of a program mm-hmm. and they're tasked with doing that. Yeah, and they have no idea what they're doing to begin with. Yep. They have to look at other programs, learn from that. Uh, right. Just, you know, don't rule that stuff out until you're ready. I mean, honestly, they should be, well, now we're getting a little bit off subject, but yeah. on this marijuana subject, they should go to Colorado and just hire some of those people out of their system and say, take our system over and fix it. Please. Because uh, Colorado is making tons of tax dollars off of this program, and we're, we're making nothing. Okay, so back on topic, Ronnie, as a police officer, um, have you had situations where you've had to deal with prostitution? Uh, yes, I had a, a woman I worked in our North Central District, which uh, it ends up there at Watt and Auburn Boulevard. Oh, sure. That's a notorious. <laughs> that is a, a bit of a stroll. And I arrested a woman named Jennifer. If you're watching Jennifer. Hi. How you doing? I arrested her probably no fewer than uh, 20 times to the point that I knew her date of birth. And her social security number. That's pretty familiar. Yes. Um, and and when I first arrested her, she wouldn't give me her name the very first time. Thankfully, she had it tattooed on her back. Good thing. So right where her tramp So you don't forget go. her name. Yes. <laughs> it's not for her. <laughs> no. That's not for her pleasure. No. So, but yeah, I mean, it is. It's a, it's an amazing problem and it's, 
Um, what what so what happens? Do you take them in? Oh yeah, take them in. Book them. Take them to jail. They go to court. They get a slap on the wrist and they get out. Back on the street. Yep. Just uh, like that, and it doesn't matter how many times. No. Uh, what they want to do is and, there a fine associated with that? Uh, yeah, but she was so indigent. There's no way she could pay any money. I'm not sure. She probably was sentenced to work project where you know you go clean up tombstones at the cemetery for a couple of days or something, and yeah, you're good. Uh -huh. But it's um, yeah, it's it's very. And they've even gone so far as to set up stings where they arrest the Johns. Right. They'll use a deputy sheriff, a female deputy sheriff, and they'll put like a little black over a couple of her teeth to make her look a little bit more... Indigent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to say hookery. Hookery. <laughs> New word. <laughs> or hoary, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymes with Rory. <laughs> And they send them out there, and they arrest all the Johns. And those actually seem to be a little bit more... Um, they're a little bit more effective in stopping the problem, because once those Johns get arrested, they don't want to get arrested again, and they... A lot of times they'll post their pictures in the newspaper and on their website. And what happens when their wife finds out? Oh, boy. Yeah. Not good. I've seen that on cops. We actually... We had one of our deputy sheriffs recently, well, within the last year, uh, he got caught in a sting. He's no longer working for our department, as you can imagine. Yeah. And he had a beautiful wife. I'm not sure if they're still together. I doubt um, it. I just can't. And he was, he's a young, good-looking kid. I just, I don't know what the, what the attraction is there, how that comes to be, but... I don't either. Needless to say, for him, was definitely not worth it. Very costly. Yeah. Well, we're seeing it work in Switzerland. Yeah. Um, it does a lot of good things. It is the oldest profession on earth that we are aware of. And it's not gone away. Maybe carpentry. They had to build the first whorehouse. Oh, uh, well, Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he was. Uh, so... You know, I, I don't know. I, I think we need to op be open to new ideas. Yeah. And honestly, the human trafficking issue is something that we have to address immediately. Yeah. Children are disappearing all over the world. Some are being taken right out of the hands of their parents. Yeah. And it has to stop. And I don't have the answer, but this seems to be a possible potential solution. It's a good start. If Give it a thought. Else. Yep. If you have any more questions or if you have some comments that you'd like to make, you can feel free to do that below. Uh, that's what it's there for. Ronnie and I are very good about getting back to you. Um, it's pretty simple. I usually say thanks, and Ronnie just gives you a little... <laughs> yeah. But either way. <laughs> I, like to, I like to get my jabs in. You do. Uh, so so you, you'll find out when you leave us a comment below. Also, if you don't mind... If you've enjoyed our time together, perhaps you've op your mind has been opened, uh, subscribe to our channel. It's very easy to do. You yeah. see that subscribe button right there. It doesn't hurt. No. We're not going to sell you anything. We couldn't make it any easier. It's so uh, right there. Just click on that button and subscribe to our channel, and we would greatly appreciate that. All right, Ronnie, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you on the very next episode of Men Are Freaking Smart.